the redeemed of the Lord say so Because the world needs to know Let the redeemed of the Lord say so Because the world needs to know Let the redeemed of the Lord say so Because the world needs to know Let the redeemed of the Lord say so Because the world needs to know Welcome to Say So Where we talk about it, whatever it is Because what you do not know can hurt you or someone that you know and love. So let's get to the root. For today's episode, we are going to continue in the same vein of the Beauty for Ashes series. Yet we're going to turn the page and we're going to go from talking about how I am not my hair or you are not your hair to I am not this skin right so i wanted to go over a few definitions the beauty and the ashes definition just to kind of set the foundation and to remind you of what those definitions are and were in previous episodes right so beauty is a combination of qualities such as the shape the color and the form that pleases the aesthetic senses so it's pleasing to the eyes especially the sight Now, the example that they provided, low the definition was, I was struck by her beauty. And a beautiful woman is synonymous with a beauty queen, a looker, a lovely person, a stunner, a bombshell, a eye fool, and the antonym or the opposite of beauty is an ugly woman, right? Now, as it pertains to exchanging beauty for ashes, ashes are the powdery substance residue left over after the burning of a substance. Now, the remains of something destroyed or ruined is also a definition for the term of beauty for ashes. So, we're going to continue with making the divine exchange of beauty for ashes, right? Now... I wanted to, since the topic is entitled, I am not this skin, I wanted to define skin. What is skin? And things of that nature to ensure, because of course we know or have a head knowledge of what skin is, but I just wanted to define it to make sure that we're all on the same page. So skin is defined as the thin layer of tissue forming the natural outer covering of a person. Synonyms or similar words is epidermis, which stands for the outer layer of your skin. Um, The dermis, which is the inner layer of your skin that you can't readily see, as well as your coloring, your complexion. It has to do with pigmentation and your hyperdermis, which is the third level of your skin. So that is what skin is. Skin is just basically a protective covering, what we're all, you know, covered in and covered with, right? As it pertains to medically speaking, skin is the largest organ in the body and it covers the body's entire surface area. That's why it's the largest organ, right? So I wanted to begin this episode with talking about my skin journey, which started for me, of course, I've had skin all of my life, uh, or at least since I came out of the womb, but I started at about, I'm going to say about age seven, eight, nine-ish, elementary school, basically, with having back acne, right? So it was, you would just discover it because I would be outside playing and sweaty or what have you. I might, my back may be itchy. I might scratch it or what have you. And then when you look under your fingernails, you got the head of a bump or you can feel the bumps and they may itch or what have you. Back then, I thought it was probably because of eating greasy foods and, you know, just sweating and being outside and in the environment. Because, you know, when you're outside, all of the whatever, the pollutants and things that, that are invisible, they get on our skin. They, you know, get in our skin and stuff. So, which could have been the fact because every day in lunch, you know, you get fries or whatever, or fries are an option, right? And for children, that's pretty popular. That's usually their first choice. 
So that it started as, like I said, back acne. And it wouldn't be like a whole total breakout, but just over time, there would be a bump. It would be burst. And like I said, sometimes accidentally, you're just scratching your back because it's itching or whatever, or it's irritating you. And then you have a head of a bump or you have some skin or you have something, you know, underneath your nail. Now, there were times where, of course, I saw the bump or could feel it and would ask somebody else to burst it. So what would happen is once you burst the bump, there's a scab or it just leaves a blemish or a dark mark, right? So my first beginning journey began with back acne. It also was upper arm acne, right? Which you can't really see now because it's cleared up, thank the Lord. But when I was younger, I would have like blemishes, like little dots where you could tell where the bumps were. And the bumps weren't really big or anything. They were very small and minute, but still, like I said, over time, the more blemishes accumulate, the worse it looks, you know. And you probably, if not you or somebody that you know or have seen where they have their back out and they may have dark spots and blemishes or what have you. So this began for me as a little girl. At age 14, I began to have face acne. So once again, it wasn't like a major blowout or a major breakout. It would just be a bump here or there periodically. And like I said, for me, the process is you burst the bump and then it becomes a scab. You feel the scab however many times needed or necessary. Sometimes it's only one time and then it becomes a blemish or basically a scar. And the reason is you're interrupting the healing process because the reason our skin clots and Form scabs is to have a protective layer over something that could be susceptible to foreign pathogens or germs or bacteria could get infected. So our skin naturally forms that scab or that hard external covering to keep any of that stuff out of it and keep it from getting infected and things from getting worse. So when it comes to interrupting that, you're interrupting the healing process. So while your skin is trying to heal, you're basically saying you're not going to heal. I'm going to, you know, expose you to the elements and the bacteria and all of those things. And the finished result is like blemishes and uh, dark pigmentation on your skin or what have you. So that's kind of what my skin journey looked like and... It has continued, you know, so now, which is a blessing, I do not get breakouts like I used to. I may get a bump or a knot or something here or there, but not as often or as much frequency or the quantity as well as it used to be. And I spoke with my esthetician and she, you know, says that that's a blessing because some people don't have that testimony. There are some individuals that have flawless skin all of their lives and then when they get older they start getting breakouts and they start getting acne so it could go either way or it could continue into your older age having began when you were younger right so thank the lord for that it's a blessing in and of itself now an esthetician is someone like that helps you with your skin or what have you and when i receive facials on a monthly basis my esthetician is the one that does that so we talk a lot about skin and we talk a lot about some of the things that i can do to help to improve my skin and some things that maybe i have done to damage my skin that i could should or would discontinue and all of those things. But as a part of my skin journey, I also wanted to go over a list of the products that I have used, or at least that I recall using over the years, because I said my ninth grade year is when I began having face acne or beginning bumps and breakouts, which is pretty common because teenage dumb, you got a lot going on with your bodies and your hormones. And once again, French fries are always, French fries and pizza was like the thing in high school or in school in general. So that was pretty much on the menu just about every day. So, you know, you, you're you eating greasy foods, you're eating foods that's prepared pretty quickly and maybe not most healthy, you know, forms. Things aren't necessarily baked, they're dipped in grease, they're fried, you know, and things of that nature just to get it done really quickly and to prepare it in large quantities, right? So some of the products that I used, the initial product that I began to use was Noxzema, which I really enjoyed and loved that product. First of all, it smelled really good and it was almost like a mentholiptus smell. It smelled really clean and fresh. And I learned the hard way though, that noxema is for people that already have good skin, that already have clear skin. It does not help with coloration or pigmentation. It does not help to treat blemishes. It does not help to prevent breakouts even. But it does leave your skin really, really soft. 
But for me, I wanted to stop the acne and prevent future blemishes. So for me, it was not the ideal product for what my needs were. I tried Oxy 10 and they had this white cream that you would put on your face or what have you. I did that. I did the Oxy 10 pads where you would clean your face. Actually, mine was emergency spot treatment. So you would literally just put it on and rub it into wherever your spot was. And it was supposed to treat the spot. It was supposed to make it kind of faded over time and things of that nature. I did Stridex. I did their pads as well. I can remember doing proactive even in my 20s. And basically with proactive, you know, it worked really well. And I actually heard somebody term it face crack because they saw somebody while they were utilizing proactive and their skin was really nice, really clear, almost flawless. And then they saw them after they stopped or discontinued their use of proactive. It was like night and day, like their skin was not clear. <laughs> it was not flawless or anything like that. And that's one of the things with proactive. And way back then, early 2000s, it was like $30 a month. And the thing about it is they would give you like a big bottle and then they would give you a small bottle and then they would give you another big bottle. Understanding and knowing full well that you're going to run out of the smaller bottle before you run out of the big bottles, which means you're going to have to buy more product. When they could have given you all the same size bottle and then you would run out likely around the same time because all of these different things that you were applying to your face you would need to do it daily and it would be like a three-step process. You would need to cleanse your face and then you would do the tonic and then you would do a moisturizer or something like that. So proactive did work and was extremely effective. But for me, it did not meet my individual needs because I can't imagine for the next 20, 30, 40 years, however long I live, having your hand in my pocket for $30 a month and probably now is higher than that. Because my thing is, if you have the cure or the ability to cure acne and an issue, okay, you have the solution to the problem. Why then would you only, number one, give me a small amount? Why would you choose to treat as opposed to cure? So you have to, every month I have to pay. And let's say I don't pay or let's say something happens financially or what have you. Now, I don't have this pretty much medicine that you've prescribed or that I need on my face. So now my face is going to revert back to the breakouts, the blemishes or whatever, what have you, simply because I'm not a member anymore or I'm not paying the membership fee or what have you. So for me, that's an issue. For me, that's an ethical issue because like I said, if you have the ability to cure something, why then would you just treat it? Unless you're just in it for the money, which is capitalism. That's, that's pretty much, you know, what people are in it for and why all of this medication and stuff is treating symptoms but not curing symptoms because if you know enough to treat something you're steps away from actually curing that thing right and you probably know how to cure it but once again it's more lucrative for you to keep your hand in somebody's pocket for on a weekly bi-weekly or monthly basis right Ambien. I tried Ambien. I'm trying to think what form of Ambien. I think it was the face wash or something. I may have even tried their cleansing bar or the soap that goes along with that. Cetaphil. I saw this lady. She was an older lady. You could tell, but her skin, when I tell you it was flawless, when I tell you it was beautiful, it was glowing. Okay. And I asked her like, what is the secret? Like, what do you use on your skin? First thing she told me, she drinks lots of water. And the second thing she told me, she uses Cetaphil. So from that day on, I began to use Cetaphil and it did work. They have a soap. They have the foaming cleansing stuff and all of that. They have a whole, you know, product line, multi-step system. Another thing that I've used on my skin is black soap. And not only did I like use it on my face or what have you, but it's something that you can, you know, bathe the, the entire, you know, circumference of your body or the rest of your skin. And if you want your skin to kind of match and be even or whatever, what have you, it smells really good. It lathers up really well. Some of the black soap, they dye it black, right? And so the suds and everything is black and some of the black soap is not black. So they, they opt not to put the dye in it, but it definitely is on the more natural side of all of the things that I've previously listed. So I've also tried the Dollar Tree acne system. It was orange and it was it had like white writing on it or what have you. And I mean, it was cost effective when it was the actual Dollar Tree and not the Dollar 25 and up tree. But 
It was effective. They had their own cleanser. I believe they had a soap. I know they had the cream that you apply on your face, likely a moisturizer and all of those. If I'm not mistaken, it was like four things that you could buy for your skin. I utilized that. I'm not sure how long and I'm not 100% sure how effective because, you know, with it being cost effective, I'm very frugal or can be. So I'm very budget conscious. So I would assume or imagine if it worked really well, if it was as effective as it needed to be, I would have stayed on it and continued. That brings us to today. Today, uh, I am doing the uh, Glow Melanin line. And this is the Magic Eraser Dark Spot Cream right here. And what this does is you apply it daily. And I also utilize the Skin Melanin Correcting Serum. That's kind of why my skin looks really glossy right now, even though I've wiped it off, like <laughs> trying to take some of that glare off my stare. But I also utilize this on a daily basis. And these are just droplets and it's liquid and you rub it in. I use Magic Eraser first. And then I go in with that twice a week. You're supposed to use this tonic or brightening scrub. And you don't use it daily and you're not supposed to use it daily because it's like a scrub and you don't want to dry out your skin or irritate your skin too much. I also use the Glow Melanin. They have a turmeric soap. Smells absolutely delicious. I mean, almost. It's like a lemony smell, a really fresh smell. And uh, initially when I started it, I, I had gotten it. Because they had like buy one, get one free or something. You were get, able to get two bars for like the price of one. So I had two bars and I originally bought it to have one bar to utilize for my face. And then once I'm out of that one, I would have a spare bar, right? But it smelled so very good that the first bar I utilized for my face and also my body. Because you can use it for your body too. If like I said, you got scarring or what have you for back acne or upper arm acne. And another thing that I did not say is... How about in my 40s, I started getting chest acne. I'm like, bro, what is, where is this coming from? Like, this ain't nothing I never had to deal with. But I will say that the Glow Melanin products have brightened it. If you go back and look at some of my previous episodes, you can actually see the chest acne. Like, you can see the spots and the dots or what have you. And now, they're not as visible. I remember, let me see, actually... The first I am not my skin, if you go back and look at that, you will be able to see that like right here, I had a dark spot and I actually almost had two. I had one here and I had one here. It's getting lighter as you can tell because with me sitting back off, you can't even tell that it was there or that it is there. So it's fading. I began using the glow melanin the last week of April and I've been using it ever since then. Now, here we go. I got some new bumps or new blemish marks and those are darker or darkest, but these that were here and have been being treated are a lot lighter. And so I'm working, I'm in a season where I'm working on my skin and I've always actually had to work on it on some level. As I'm looking at the time, it is fleeting. So we will likely have a part two to end this series of beauty for ashes which includes i am not my hair as well as i am not this skin so i want you to remember that god and only god has the final say so about where you are now where you have been and where you are going you are simply in the process of becoming who and what god created ordained and destined you to be for his kingdom and for his glory until next time 